This is Codex CLI, a tool that I've been avoiding for the longest time because I found it buggy, clunky, and the GPT models for coding weren't as good as Claude. But last month, they changed the game with a huge update that includes a cleaner UI, a better model, and the ability to log in with your ChatGPT plan. So let's go through these changes, talk about how it compares to Claude code, and also mention how using Codex CLI can make you rich. Codex CLI, not to be confused with the Codex agent in ChatGPT, is OpenAI's terminal-based Claude Code competitor, which was first written in TypeScript using Ink, but has now been rewritten in Rust with Ratatouille for better performance, less dependencies, and better security. In my experience, the Rust version is faster than the TypeScript one. But let's look at some other improvements. Just after adding the Codex command, you get asked how you want to log in. Sign in with ChatGPT or continue using the API, similar to Claude Code. But notice just how minimal the layout is. Just text, no fancy ASCII art. This follows throughout the rest of the UI. If we give it a prompt like, what node packages does this project use? It reads the package JSON file and just lists them out. It doesn't specify what tools it used or show us its reasoning. To view that information, you can press Escape twice or Control T to view the transcript. And here we can see the bash command it ran, everything it read through, and all of its thinking in this new transcript window, which means if I press Q, it will take me back to the main layout. Codex has 11 slash commands by default. Notable ones are the init command, which creates an agents.md file, not a codex file, which is such a breath of fresh air considering each other tool for some reason has its own MD file. The status command, which is useful for showing workspace, model, and token usage information, and the model command, which shows GPT-5 by default, no nano or mini, but you can change the level of reasoning, and I've heard for coding, GPT-5 high is really good. This is something I haven't figured out how to do in other tools. Speaking of other tools, one thing Codex CLI focuses on more than others is security. By default, Codex runs in a sandbox so that when it executes code, it doesn't interfere with anything outside of the project workspace like system files, processes, and the network. Unless, of course, you give it permission to do so, which is where things get a bit complicated. Codex CLI has a sandbox flag with three options. Workspace write, which means Codex can read and edit files within your current directory without approval. Read only, where Codex just reads files in the directory without approval, but will still ask for approval when it comes to edits or running commands. And finally, there's danger full access to give Codex broader autonomy. But you can also pair sandbox with approvals, which makes things a bit confusing. You can set that with the ask for approval flag, which has on request, meaning Codex will always ask whenever it needs approval. Never means it will never ask, on failure will ask for permission to retry if a command fails, and untrusted means it will only run trusted commands. So if you wanted Codex to run in plan or read-only mode, that would be this, and for YOLO mode, that would be this, or this, or even just this. Luckily, you can check your sandbox or approval settings with the status command, and you can add these values to the config toml file, where you can even make custom profiles that you can run with the dash p command. Since we're focusing on the config toml file, did you know that you can even run non-open AI models that have an open AI compatible API? Currently, I've only got this to work with the GPT OSS models. For other models like DeepSeek, I get this error, which may be because of the way I've configured it, or just because DeepSeek doesn't support tools in the way that Codex CLI expects. You can also set a model's reasoning effort, summary, and verbosity all inside the config and also trigger a notification script, which I believe works in a similar way to Claude's code hooks. You can also configure MCP servers like our better stack one, which you should definitely look into. Check out the link in the description for more information. Okay, that's enough on the config. Let's talk about some other features. Of course, you can use at to add a file, paste images with control V and run codecs in non-interactive mode add custom prompts in the prompts folder, which you can run like this. But how does this all compare to Claude code? Actually, who am I kidding? This isn't a fair comparison. In terms of features, Claude code is way ahead. 
custom prompts with arguments, a custom status line, a better hooks implementation, custom sub-agents, output styles, visual context, the ability to resume sessions, background tasks, Vim mode, security review, and Claude Code has better documentation, not just because it's on their website instead of a bunch of markdown files in GitHub, but also it's way more detailed. I mean, look at the documentation we have on hooks compared to the Codex Notify feature, which is in the config file and only has a small section. But Codex does have a way to make you rich. Well, kind of rich. OpenAI have an open source fund giving open source projects up to $25,000 in API credits if they use Codex CLI and any other OpenAI models, which I think is a nice thing to do. But even though I don't think currently Codex is a replacement for Claude Code, right now it's at a good base to add more features to. I mean, I don't use VS Code or Cursor, but I do like the look of the Codex plugin for it. Yes, there are a few things I find annoying about Codex, like the sandbox and approval options, or having to set preferred auth methods in the config to prevent Codex from asking you how you want to log in each time. But I'm sure the team are working on this and I really look forward to seeing all the updates with Codex in the future. But for now, what do you think of the new Codex? Have you tried it out? Let me know in the comments, especially if you're a Windows user because they don't officially support that yet. Anyway, again, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, happy coding.